there's uh, sad and really ongoing and continually painful history behind blackface. It started during slavery, but really reached its height after the abolition of slavery and throughout the beginning of the 20th century. And in that history, blackface caricatures of black people, first caricatures of slaves, caricatures based on stereotypes of ideas about black people's inferiority, and just in general, the unseriousness of black people, the idea that we weren't human beings, but we're just there for the use and entertainment of white people. Those characters performed by white people in blackface primarily um, were the most popular form of entertainment in America before television and radio, and even some of the formative radio programs like Amos and Andy, some of the first films ever made in the U.S., incorporated blackface characters, not just as racist propaganda to keep in place ideas about black people's inferiority, but uh, ideas just based on the notion that black people didn't exist for ourselves, but existed for white people's pleasure and leisure and entertainment. And it's that history that makes blackface so troubling when it still goes on today. I feel like every Halloween this happens. Some celebrity <clears throat> or pseudo-celebrity feels the need to dress up in blackface. The responses that we see a lot of the time is that people plead ignorance. So one thing we have to recognize is that people think ignorance is still an excuse for doing the wrong thing. So when we continue to see, despite every year black people <clears throat> and other people of color and white people who become cognizant of what's wrong with blackface and of its history, uh, despite the fact that we speak back to people who continue to use our cultures and our history and our identities as costumes. Uh, the fact that that continues to go on around holidays, I think, signals a basic error in the mindset that goes on to something like putting on a costume, putting on someone's identity, putting the color of their skin on your face, or putting the part of their identity that is their racial background on your face is in the minds of some people, a form of entertainment, it's life lighthearted, and oftentimes we even hear that it's not just for entertainment, but it's somehow a weird sign of respect, or it's ironically making fun of racism. But if we look at what it actually entails, if all you're doing is sort of reducing someone's identity to the color of their skin, or a representation of the color of their skin, you're not empathizing with them, you're not putting yourself in their shoes, you're not being compassionate toward them, you're not appreciating the vitality of what makes you admire them, if that's what you claim to say, or the genuine value of their talent if you're dressing up as an entertainer or an athlete or even a figure in popular culture or reality TV. You're not taking seriously the fact that they're a human being and not just their color. And I think that it's that mindset that allows people who don't have to think about race and don't have to think about their own role in being subject to racial stereotypes or suffering from their negative implications, um, allows them to put themselves in a place where all you see is someone's color or all you see is really just the fictions that are told about them in our culture continually. So I think that that kind of ignorance allows blackface to repeat itself and allows the harm that it does to be repeated. I think the only thing that should be expanded on is uh, encouraging people who defend and who rationalize white people dressing up in blackface or who use the examples of black people putting on blackface or even black people putting on whiteface to sort of deflect and steer the conversation away from the injury and the harm that blackface performance does to black people and to our humanity. Um, I think that when we see defensive and rationalizing strategies and deflecting strategies like that coming up, uh, I think those are occasions for the same conversations about, the same reflections on, the same continued need for redress around how black people have not been able to define ourselves. So even if black people dress up in blackface, uh, it wasn't our idea. We were held in bondage when the idea originated, and when white people popularized images of us in blackface because of racial discrimination, some of the only jobs we could get in the arts and entertainment 
required us to perform in blackface, even though we're already black, and it's supposedly our culture that's supposed to be on display. It's also important to think, if black people take on the roles of white people, if a black person, to make an ironic comment, puts on whiteface, that doesn't have the same history of betrayal and injury and ignorance that white people putting on blackface has. It doesn't have an equivalent meaning to white people in history that blackface has to black people. So we need to remember that this same history is what makes the meanings of these different acts of blackface and things like it continue to mean different things and continue to mean that what we need to pay more attention to is the real injury and and harm that blackface has done and the continued need for healing around it rather than sort of explaining it away or taking it for granted.